You've probably seen a lot of buzz about PRP and exosomes and even Wharton's jelly injections for hair growth. What's the difference? Which one actually helps you regrow thicker, stronger hair? In today's video, I'll break down exactly how each treatment works, what science says, what to expect in terms of results, and which option might be best depending on your situation. By the end, you'll understand how these injections are different from one another and why one of them might be the real next generation of regenerative hair therapy. Chapter one, PRP, platelet-rich plasma. The original regenerative injection. PRP stands for platelet-rich plasma and it's been around for years, not just for hair, but also for joint pain and skin rejuvenation as well. Here's how it works. They draw a small amount of your blood then spin it in a centrifuge and the plasma, which contains platelets, growth factors, and healing proteins is separated and then injected back into your scalp. And these growth factors, things like VEGF, PDGF, and IGF, signal your body to increase blood flow, to wake up dormant follicles, and to extend the growth phase of your hair cycle. The pros, it's 100% your own material, so there's no risk of rejection or immune reaction. Another pro, it improves circulation and follicle health over time, and some studies show increased hair density after three to four sessions, which also is a con. You may need multiple treatments, three to six sessions per year maybe, to maintain results. And results vary depending on how advanced your thinning is. Another big con of PRP therapy is that it relies entirely on the healing and regenerative factors present in your own blood. And that's where age becomes a limiting factor, right? As we move past our 30s and especially into our 50s and beyond, the platelets and growth factors in our plasma become less abundant and less active. The body produces fewer signaling molecules like PDGF, VEGF and IGF-1, which are essential for stimulating cell repair, collagen production, and follicle regeneration. So, in other words, the same PRP procedure that might deliver dramatic results at 25 or 30 can be noticeably less effective at 45 or 50. Not because the treatment has changed, but because our biological raw material has. That decline in growth factors with age is one of the reasons I wanted to develop something topical something you can actually use at home to keep your scalp environment healthy between treatments. My ASLF Hair Growth Boost Serum uses an award-winning microalgae complex. What I love about this formula is that it doesn't just target one pathway. It supports follicle health from multiple angles, circulation, inflammation, oxidative stress, and DHT at the scalp level, all without messing with your hormones systemically. And for me, that's huge. Check out my serum at the link below. Shipping in the US is free right now. Back to the video. Think of PRP as the first generation of regenerative regenerative hair therapy, effective for mild to moderate thinning, but limited by what your own blood can produce. That's why many clinics now use PRP in combination with Wharton's jelly or exosomes, which deliver additional youthful growth factors and signaling molecules that help compensate for the natural decline in potency of our own plasma with age. Which brings us to chapter two, Wharton's jelly injections. Wharton's jelly, the term that sounds mysterious but is actually a very real, very promising biological material. Wharton's jelly is the gel-like connective tissue found inside the umbilical cord surrounding the cord's blood vessels. It's naturally rich in MCSs or also rich in growth factors, collagen, and hyaluronic acid, all of which make it a powerful regenerative substance. And when processed for medical use, Wharton's jelly is donated from full-term healthy births with parental consent, of course, and then it's rigorously screened for infectious diseases. The tissue is then cleaned, it's cryopreserved, and enzymatically processed to isolate its extracellular matrix and the bioactive compounds within it, including cytokines, chemokines, and exosomes released by the stem cells. Importantly, it doesn't contain live cells after processing. Instead, it delivers the biosignaling molecules these cells produce, which is what actually drives regeneration, right? In regenerative aesthetics and hair restoration, Wharton's jelly acts like a supercharged biological scaffold. It reduces 
inflammation, it improves circulation, and provides a concentrated supply of youthful growth factors that can reawaken dormant follicles and improve scalp microenvironment health. And several studies have shown encouraging results. A 2022 paper in the Stem Cell Research and Therapy found that Wharton's jelly-derived MSCs stimulated dermal papilla cell proliferation and prolonged the antigen or growth phase of the hair cycle in vitro. Another 2023 clinical review published in the Aesthetic Surgery Journal highlighted that Wharton's jelly injections improved hair density and and thickness in patients who had plateaued with PRP alone. Additionally, preclinical data shows strong anti-inflammatory and angiogenic or blood vessel forming effects, both critical for follicle survival and follicle regrowth. PRP uses growth factors and Wharton's jelly delivers young bioactive growth factors and cytokines from birth tissue, giving your scalp a much stronger regenerative signal. The pros of Wharton's jelly, it contains a significantly higher concentration of growth factors and structural proteins than PRP. It has strong anti-inflammatory and wound healing properties, and it can help rejuvenate scalp tissue even in more advanced hair thinning. The cons of Wharton's jelly, it's not your own tissue, so it's considered allogenic though it's thoroughly screened, sterilized, and FDA registered for safety. It costs more than PRP, typically ranging from 1,200 to 2,000 per session. Last con, there are fewer long-term large-scale human studies compared to PRP, although data is rapidly growing. Now, in practice, many regenerative medicine physicians see Wharton's jelly as the next step up from PRP, right? It's a middle ground between traditional platelet therapy, and cutting-edge exosome treatments. It's particularly promising for those over 40 whose own plasma may no longer contain the same concentration of potent growth factors. Chapter 3 exosome injections. Now we get to the most advanced and arguably most exciting option exosome injections. Exosomes are microscopic extracellular vesicles naturally released by stem cells. Think of them as these tiny biological messengers that carry molecular instructions like RNA, peptides, and growth signals from one cell to another. Their job is to tell your cells to repair, to regenerate, and to rejuvenate. For hair restoration, exosomes are typically derived from these MSCs stem cells often sourced from Wharton's jelly, bone marrow, or placental tissue. These stem cells are cultivated under controlled sterile conditions and the exosomes they secrete are isolated and purified using advanced filtration and ultracentrifugation techniques. The final product is cell-free, meaning it doesn't contain any live stem cells, just the potent biosignaling molecules those cells produced. That's important because exosomes can safely deliver the regenerative benefits of stem cells without the regulatory hurdles or injection risks of using live cell therapy. And once it's injected into the scalp, exosomes go to work and they reduce inflammation around the hair follicle, which is one of the biggest drivers of miniaturization and hair loss, right? They also reactivate dermal papilla cells, which are the master cells that control hair growth and thickness. They also stimulate angiogenesis or new blood vessel formation, which increases follicle oxygen and nutrient delivery. And they extend the antigen or growth phase and shorten the resting or telogen phase of the hair cycle. Okay, clinical evidence and studies. A growing number of studies back this up. A 2020 paper in stem cell and translational medicine demonstrated that MSC-derived exosomes increased the proliferation of dermal papilla cells by up to 80% and promoted new hair shaft formation in animal models. In 2022, a human clinical trial published in the Journal of Cosmetic Dermatology reported that patients receiving exosome scalp injections showed significant increases in hair density and thickness within 12 weeks without any major side effects. And more recently, a 2023 review in Aesthetic Surgery Journal concluded that exosomes present a paradigm shift in regenerative aesthetics 
due to their powerful ability to signal tissue repair and hair follicle regeneration. So processing and quality control. Not all exosome products are equal, and this is hugely important. High quality exosomes are produced in FDA registered labs using GMP or good manufacturing practice standards. They undergo strict purification and testing to ensure they are cell free, right? Pathogen free and standardized for exosomal content. Because of the complexity of the process, exosome products tend to cost more, but the purity and potency are what make them effective. The pros of exosomes, they contain 10 to 100 times more growth signals than PRP, no blood draw required, reduces inflammation and oxidative stress while directly stimulating follicle repair, and safe and cell-free, which means it's suitable for people of all ages or those who've plateaued with PRP. So the cost. It's definitely the most expensive option, often between 2,500 and 3,500 per session. And another con, it's still relatively new. Long-term human data is limited, but it is very promising and quality varies by manufacturer, so clinic selection is crucial. To summarize, exosomes represent the third generation of regenerative hair therapies. PRP is your body's own signal, Wharton's jelly delivers young nutrient-rich growth factors, and exosomes deliver the actual instructions, telling your follicles to grow, repair, and regenerate. Now, many regenerative specialists now use exosomes in combination with PRP or Wharton's jelly for a synergistic effect and boosting both the signaling and the cellular environment of the scalp. This technology is still evolving, right? But early results suggest it could become the gold standard for non-surgical hair restoration in the next few years. All right, last chapter, which one is best for you? If your hair loss is mild, or if you're just starting to notice thinning, PRP might be enough to stimulate regrowth and improve density. If you've already tried PRP or your hair loss is more advanced, Wharton's Jelly offers a stronger regenerative boost and helps improve scalp environment. And if you want the most cutting edge approach with the strongest potential for long-term follicle rejuvenation and you have the money, exosomes are currently leading the pack, especially for people combining them with laser therapy, microneedling, or supplement support. Final thoughts, all three have their place. Think of it as a spectrum, PRP, then Wharton's Jelly, then exosomes. Each one is a little bit more advanced and more potent than the last. If you're considering these treatments, always go to a qualified clinic that specializes in regenerative therapies and can show real before and after results using medical grade products. And remember, injections are powerful, but the best long-term results come when you combine them with a healthy scalp routine, proper nutrition, and low-level laser or red light therapy. If you found this video helpful, please like the video, hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. I talk a lot about longevity, hair regeneration, and anti-aging on this channel. And next, I think you should watch my video about the five most popular hair growth serums on the market right now. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.